Hey there, Addie here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you followed me on Instagram, you probably saw the photo that showed I had a Galentine's Day with some of my best girlfriends, Julia and Mary. I'll insert their photo right here. Yep, those are them. They are some amazing girlfriends and I cannot sing their praises enough. I'm not gonna do it in this video because it would be an hour long, but <laughs> anyway, I know you guys are watching, so love ya. Today, I wanted to talk about women's empowerment. We got on the subject when we were hanging out, having our Galentine's Day about how important it is to have female best friends. Now, kind of like with my Catholic school experience video, this is going to be sort of an advice slash insight slash story time hybrid video. First off, I want to say that I do not want to shame anybody in this video. I'm not going to be using a real name for this story. But years ago in high school, I actually did have a best friend, which was kind of a toxic friendship. And you're going to see why in a second. For the purposes of the story, we're just going to call her E. These are her initials so that I don't mess up her name and don't accidentally forget it or refer to her as a different name, and you're like, wait, who is that? So, E. E and I met in high school. She was actually two years older than me. I was a freshman, she was a junior. And we actually met by doing Godspell. The year before I came, or the semester before I came to the high school, they did a production of Godspell. And they reprised it for my first semester at the high school. She was actually in the play, she was actually on stage performing and singing, and I was in the pit band. I used to play violin. We got to know each other that way, and from the rehearsals, and then I found out she was in the choir, so we found out we had a lot in common. We had a love of music, we liked to sing, and much like me, she was adopted at a young age. Those were our bonding points to start it off, and she was a very... She was a very nice girl. I'm not gonna, again, I'm not going to shame her or say she's a bad person or anything like that. She just was very toxic. Now, I know I used to think this, but toxic for me kind of created this idea of catty or bad or mean. But it doesn't always mean that because I honestly do not think she has a mean bone in her body. I'm not going to go into too, too much detail about it because I think I touched it on another video. But basically, she did not know a single thing about me. And what do I mean by that? I don't mean that she didn't know all of my inner strengths or all my struggles, because some things I do like to keep private, for sure. But she didn't know some things as basic as my birthday. Yes, you heard that right, my birthday. She didn't even know how to give me a gift. She would give me a bunch of these soaps and lotions that were from Bath & Body Works, which smell nice, but I have very sensitive skin, so me using very heavily scented body lotions and shower gels just makes me break out in hives. Anyways, she was very toxic in that regard. Another way she was toxic was she didn't respect me in certain ways. And what do I mean by that? Well, first, kind of another high school story. This is This is going to sound a little catty and sort of high school girlish, but just hear me out. I had a crush on this guy. We're going to call him M. I had this crush on him for about a year or so. And I was afraid to tell her because I thought she was going to let it slip to M that I liked him. And I didn't want it to slip one because it was embarrassing, but also he was dating somebody, somebody else at the time. <laughs> but anyways, she didn't necessarily tell him. She just kind of got him alone or hinted at the fact that I liked him, he picked it up because she made it very obvious. And it didn't hurt the fact that she told my crush that I basically liked him. I mean, that did hurt. But the fact that she broke my trust. Something like that, I want to confide in a best friend with. Or I'd ask, when she knew about my crush, I would ask like, hey, do you think M is cute? Do you think he's a nice guy? And she'd be just like, ugh. Another way that she was very toxic was... If I was telling a very serious story, you know what I, when you're telling a story and you put some sort of comedic humor 
comedic relief in there just to sort of lighten the mood a little bit. Well, I would do that. So I'd be telling a story, blah, 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 and then I'd insert a joke. So I'd be like, blah, 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 insert funny joke. And she would oversell it. She'd be like, ah! <laughs> And one, it's not that funny, but I think it was her way of sort of cutting the tension because she wasn't used to having very deep, intimate conversations like that. Another way was she would dump all of her problems on me. It became draining to talk to her. I kid you not, every time I got together with her, it was always my back, my mom, my school, my grandpa, my car. Like nothing about me. She didn't know for the longest time that I was struggling in some college classes, that my grandmother, who I was named after, had died until about three years after the fact. And just some other things. Again, we're not going to share too, too many details just for privacy's sake. And I don't want it to sound like I'm coming after her. Anyway, I saw her quite a while ago. I was still living in Massachusetts at the time. But I saw her at this high school reunion. It was basically for a bunch of classes because, again, my high school was very small. And we were cordial. I was very civil. I didn't bring up the elephant in the room, but we just kind of drifted apart because I don't need that toxicity in my life. On the flip side, my friends Julia and Mary, who I showed, whom I showed a picture of, they, we just, I don't even know how to describe it, but we just empower each other so much. We have great conversations. We can be serious, but also funny. Like we were watching Mean Girls and laughing about that. We were cooking together. We were just having conversations. They were telling me about their boyfriends. And it was just a really good time. We're not jealous of each other or anything. Like, we support each other. One, My friend Julia, she's talking about going into grad school and getting all of her stuff in order for that. And we're like, oh my gosh, that's great. And then my friend Mary, she actually applied to this study abroad program for, in Scotland. And again, we were super excited. And like, hey, good luck with that. Hopefully you get in. And then I'm starting my job which, well, I didn't start it, I started a few months ago, where I'm on a new team, working on new projects, and of course, doing my YouTube channel. And we're just very happy for each other. And something that we love to see is women in leadership roles. My friend Julia, she's actually the head of the math lab of the university in our area. So what I why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because... One, I think it's important. And two, we got to break down the stigma of girls being catty and jealous and come playing the comparison game. And I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. Believe me, I have fallen into that trap too. And I think most everybody who's watched this has. I say most everybody because according to my demographics, a lot of you are women. I think almost 100% of you are. But... Let me tell you today, stop comparing yourself to your best friend, to that girl in high school or that girl in college or that woman who got that promotion. I mean, yes, it can hurt in the moment that she got something that you didn't, but look at yourself and look at what you have. Heck, I know I fell into that trap in high school. There was this girl, a different girl from my best friend, my ex-best friend, but she was pretty, she was popular. She always had an entourage around her. She had a sister who adored her, good parents. And I'll admit, I was jealous because she always had a new phone. She had a new computer. She just had this air about her that everybody loved her. And I realized, yes, that's not healthy. But just sometimes with journaling, I write down some of the good things that I do and my good qualities. One, I made it out here to Utah. Not everybody can say that they made a long distance solo move on their own, whether it's across the country, to a different country, continent, or even just a few hours away to a different state. Not everybody can do that, but I've done it. I have a third degree black belt. How many people can say they had that? And more so, I have this fierce drive and this willingness to, mo to succeed that a lot of people don't have. I have something that no one else combined has, and that's what makes me me. So I ask you today, what makes you you? 
what qualities do you have? Are you super artistic? Do you have this intuition that not a lot of people have? Do you have this insane empathy to relate to basically anyone you meet? If you do, embrace that. Be proud of that. And again, I cannot stress enough, find good girlfriends. Yes, they are hard to find. I'm not going to lie. It's going to take some time and it is going to take some, some digging. No doubt about it. But let me tell you, there is nothing better than having those friends who have your back and say, I'm here for you. I got this. You're going to kill it. You can do this and more. In fact, I saw this great quote a little while ago on Facebook of all places, but it had this great little graphic of these two cartoon girls together. I'll see if I can find the picture of it and I'll put it up on the screen right here. Basically, it says friendship isn't about how long you've been on someone. It's about who walked into your life, said, I'm here for you and proved it. Let me tell you, my friends Julia and Mary, they have proven that. They say, girl, you got this. And again, not going to go into too much detail, but I've been struggling with something very personal with losing someone who meant a lot to me. But they encouraged me and said, hey, it's hard and I'm sorry you went through all that. But look at what you're doing. You are thriving. I started my channel. I do my photography on the side. I'm thriving at a new job. I'm doing me. No one can take that away from me. Someone else, kind of a little bonus person I want to shout out is my good friend, Ricey Joe. Hey, Ricey Joe. She also has a YouTube channel with her husband. I will link it down below. They do a bunch of mashups, Disney mashups, different music videos, some pop covers. They are just insanely talented. Again, I haven't known her as long as I knew my ex-best friend in high school. That was an eight-year friendship. But she has proven to me time and time again that she's got me, she's encouraging me, even though she's very busy with her music stuff with her husband, her two little youngsters, and just life in general. So I say to you, let this be encouragement. If you have to let go of that friend, know that it is going to be hard. It, no doubt about it. Losing all that time, whether it was an eight year friendship, an eight month friendship, or a 28 year friendship. Just look at yourself and say, is this person really supporting me and encouraging me to do my best or are they draining me are they draining all my life all of my happiness all of the drive i have are they changing me if that's the case then you've got to say goodbye and of course don't be mean about it i am not advocating bullying by any means but just be brutally honest and say listen i can't be friends with you anymore i wish you all the best but right now you're not you're not helping me on my journey. And yes, maybe they're going to hate you. Maybe they call you a bully or a horrible person. And know that it's on them. That's not on you. Take care of you. you got to be selfish to a degree. And of course, all friends have their days. All friendships have rough patches. But if this is an ongoing thing where they constantly lie to you or tear you down, let me tell you, it's not worth it. I know this was a very heavy topic and maybe it was a little rambly on my part, but I made this YouTube channel to hopefully help someone out there. Whether one of you watches this a hundred or a thousand or a hundred thousand, hopefully this impacted you. Maybe something I said helped you out or maybe you disagree with me. Let me know. And if you would like to hear more videos like this from me, then give this video a like, subscribe, comment down below. It shows YouTube that you're liking these kind of videos. And definitely comment your stories if you feel comfortable sharing them about a friend you lost or a situation that someone put you through that was really hard and how you overcame it. Seriously, let's make the comment section women's empowerment. Everybody just helping each other. Thank you again. 
give it a good like, comment, and subscribe, and have a great rest of your week.